welcome to our channel today and today we're going to be discussing and kind of sharing and just getting some wealth of knowledge from some of our amazing speakers today so today is you know as you all know every tuesday we've been doing a series called current realities and i mean it's not just for those of us in the events industry it's for everyone really once you are in your business you're working you're an entrepreneur it's for entrepreneurs it's for the events industry it's for every single person so when we've been having a series last week as you all know we had a few speakers talk to us about what we should be doing right now marketing tools and how we should be saving and investing and this time around we've come and invited a few of our friends okay hi guys hey hey oh they cool bringing a module in now <laughs> My brother, my brother. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm so happy my, to join you. My, 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 what, what should I call it? Chevron scholarship, <laughs> some bobby, some bobby. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Omojua. Thank you. Now, Omojua, before you, you, you begin. Yes, please. The speaker just before you, we, we, we've had Osai, then we yeah. had Ifoma. Ifoma Williams said, I must tell you that she's a huge fan of yours. She told everybody that they should go and buy your book. They must read it and digest it. Hmm. Omojua, thank you for coming on this platform. I know how busy you are. I heard you speak recently where you were saying that you apportion your time. And that when I asked you, the I asked you, you didn't even say, you didn't even say, you just said yes. <laughs> you didn't ask me how you didn't ask me anything. Ah. There's a, story, there's a story behind the yes. Ah, well, tell me the story. Tell me the story. Tell me the story. <laughs> I, I couldn't. I couldn't say. I was. I was like everything that was happening with my exams and my papers. I was meant to say no, but I just could not say no. Um, I just could not say no. Basically, I couldn't say no to you. Oh, so I'm I so had glad. to adjust everything to. Myself. Honestly, I love I'm you. Glad. Thank you for this. Thank you for Thank this. You. I love you too. <laughs> you know, so you know, you are the founder and chief strategist at Alpha Rich, one of Nigeria's foremost digital media companies, as you all know. I don't know whether you all of you know. His book, the new code is called the Digital Wealth Book. Now, all of you need to get that book. But me, I, how I know Omojua, let me tell you how I know him. I've known him as a control, sometimes it can be controversial. On Twitter, he's the Twitter champion. Yeah, that's his book. That's his book. <laughs> that's his book. So, Omojua, that's his book. So, you need to get the book. Omojua, you tell us later how we can get the book and things like that. But people will need to get that book. Omojua sits on the board of several companies. And is right now, let me tell you one of the things. There's a fellowship. It's called the Kashim Ibrahim Fellowship. Omojua is part of those people. He's... I, I need to talk about that Chevening Scholarship. He's a King's College old boy. If you went to King's College, or you know about King's College, Omojua is an old KC old dude, you know, for my generation. And right now, he's doing his MSc, MSc, right, in behavior, behavior, behavior change at the Faculty of Brain Sciences. Ah, Ogao, <laughs> University College London. Ah, he won a scholarship, or the Chevening Scholarship for this purpose. You can see that his brain did there. So, <laughs> mm. so i want to i don't want to um um waste too much time i i know that you know the digital media space because one of the things that as the event industry right in the event industry and this is even not just for the event industry so well, just, apart from event planners their event strategies their events um people suppliers vendors everybody and right now everybody says our industry has been the worst piece and whatever but everybody that's come on this platform or have come they've come to talk to us and come to share with us they said to us that we should be playing in the digital space that because if there was something you 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 said and i saw it on your page it was a quote you said the skill you needed for the old economy something about the old economy and now you know, the, you, you know, the, the skills you needed in the old economy is going to be different from the new economy. It's as if you saw the future. Did I get the quote right? Yes, yes. The, the book, the book definitely was 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 set for for a time like this. And, so please, um, 
I was I was listening to Ifeoma and I was like, why am I why am I coming online? She, she has said everything. She Ifeoma Williams basically said everything that that um apart from what I was going to say, she also said a lot of things that I found very very useful and very very. I I just wish that um, more young people would listen to people like Ifeoma rather than I mean it's okay to still listen to the entertainment platforms and watch things that make them laugh and things like that but i think in a world where can you hear me clearly yes we can hear you very well okay i think in a world where people are complaining people are complaining about poverty they complain about not having job opportunities i find it really shocking and contradictory that platforms like this that would empower, empower people are the ones that don't get the numbers while platforms where people do all sort of crazy things and stuff anyways so i, I was watching the film and it's a privilege to know that she pays attention to my work because i'm also a fan of her work and just listening in i had a lot to write so and she also helped me to basically just cross out some things i would have said that i don't okay. i don't intend to say again yeah but first of all let me say that maybe i should learn to promote my book better and more but i just feel like a good thing should sell itself you must be very intentional mm -hmm. about depositing yourself into other people's lives mm. basically helping people it's not charity you're doing it for yourself you must help people without without holding back Mm. You must help people and move on with your life. Mm. Because they take you away with them. Mm. Mm. Minus the old... Because I don't want to be spiritual. There's a spiritual side of this thing. So I'm not speaking to the spiritual side now. Yes. Yeah. But there's a spiritual side of it. You must go out of your way. To, like, you must appear in places. And people, somebody will come and say, Oh my God, thank you so much. You helped me. You did this for me. Mm. You must get there. Mm. You mm. must spread yourself in such a way that your goodness, your mm. kindness, goes mm. way beyond you. Hey, wow. And then you must be very intentional about building cohorts. Cohorts, okay. That's community. Yes. I have yeah. pastor communities. Okay. I have my Osai then. Told me I look for them community. <laughs> I have my Ibuku and Oshika them community. Mm, mm. I have my young people community. Mm. I have my diaspora community. Mm. I have my money makers community. I have my somebody needs five million to cure a disease. You people, please, community. <laughs> and I am very intentional about these communities. There is a cost to that. Okay. One of those costs is that you must be willing to make yourself available, available. for these people. Yes. Because your success, your ability to influence others is, is never ever about what you can get out of them. Mm. It's about what you can do for them. What you can do for them. If people never feel like, and that's why I never understand, like, people have access to my DM. Mm. Somebody, somebody asked me for money in December, mm. asked me for money in January, mm. asked me for money in February. Mm. You're not my staff. I can't be paying you every month. Mm. Mm. And then eventually I stopped replying the person. Mm. Because there is the natural, and it's natural, that person is not evil. There's a natural assumption that. Once you have access to someone that is richer than you, or that you, that you perceive to be rich, that you have to get money from them, or get something from them. That's what the crowd will do. And what I started with by saying that never follow the crowd. That thing is applicable in every sense of the world. Of the, world. the average human being becomes close to a rich person they want to get out of the person. Mm. That's the truth. I have billionaire friends. I have very powerful political friends. 
none of them, and I say this hopefully, none of them can say that I owe them more than they owe me. Because I'm very, very intentional about delivering value, and I'm very, very intentional about not asking anybody for help. And it's a very, very important place to be. Because no matter, I know a billionaire, like Forbes billionaire, Nigerian billionaire, Forbes, if he's your friend, and then you're talking on the phone, and you're now telling that somebody has a problem that if he can help, that friendship is going to end. Well, rich people, the good ones too, they don't want you to be bringing problems to them. They want you to be bringing solutions. Solutions. Why? Because everybody they know, minus the select, bring problems to them. Problems to them. When your friend becomes a minister, a governor, a chief of staff, anything. The thing that happens to that your friend is that almost everybody that is close to that person starts to look for what they can get out of that person. If you are one of those people, you are gone. Because again, you've joined the crowd. Yes. You must look out for what value you can add to that person. Because people want to be around people that they need, not people that need them. People want to help people that they need, but they don't want to be around people that need them. Sorry, people want to help people that need them. They want to send money to them. Mm. But they don't want to be around people that are going to constantly try to tear their body up. I want this, I want that. Mm. I don't think the, the, the human mind wasn't due to, to be in a position where, even if you're rich, where people are training their problems are you. That's why people rather just send their money to go and do those things. They want to be around people that offer value. No matter how rich or powerful that person is, that's how it works. Especially because the richer a person is, the more famous a person is, the more powerful a person is, the more people want to get out of them. And that's tiring for the spirit. So your ability to not be that person that's always looking to get out of the person is what will make the person feel like this person is my friend. Except if you don't do that, you're not a friend. You're just another hangers on. You're just another part of the crowd. And that's when people start to say that somebody has changed. Of course they will change. If your friend ID is to ask for money every day, you start to ask the person for money, you, you stop being the person's friend. I, I'm not saying that we should not help ourselves. I think I must have made that point already. Yes, yes. What I'm saying is, don't put yourself in a position where you become you become a burden on anyone. Let me give you an example. When so I left home, I, I don't want to. I've shared the story also. I left my father's house, and I had to go fend for myself. One of my strategies of not becoming a burden on anyone was to not stay with anyone longer than two weeks. So. If I stay with this person, before both of us start dragging, who's supposed to wash toilets and blah, 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 I've, I've gone somewhere else. Mm. And then <laughs> for everybody I stay with, I contributed something. Either I'm contributing to their, their the, the degree they are getting, I'm contributing to their paper. That's, this has always been my, it's always been my major supplier. Mm. And then eventually I was also contributing money. But I've never been with anyone that was solely a parasitic relationship. Never, ever. Never. I must be contributing something. If I'm not contributing something, I'm not even comfortable. And that's the life, that's the kind of, and when you think like that, you, you don't become someone that is stranded. Because if you are contributing something to other people's lives, especially people that ordinarily should be asking favors from, then it means that you're very intentional about building yourself about making yourself important, first of all, for yourself, then eventually for your immediate community, and then eventually for the world. I think I'll just, I'll just, you know, finalize this thought by saying that irrespective of your profession, irrespective of whether you are into services or you're selling products, there are fundamental principles that guide all of us, whether a personal brand or a corporate brand. 
I can't state all of these principles, but I can pick out some of them. Okay. You must you must stand out from the crowd. You must you must differentiate yourself. There has to be something that somebody people will know about you. Even your haters will say this particular thing, give it to this person. Mm. Then competence is not enough. Your character must speak volume too. Mm. Because you are not increasingly in a world where well being able to do it is not enough. Mm. Having the right personality is mm. even just as important, if not more. Mm. Because people want people that can help them build communities. Mm. So you must have that personality. Then I hear people say that uh, I'm not I'm not built for public speaking. You must go and learn how to speak in public. Okay. You must okay. learn it. Mm. If both of us have all the qualities, like equally, everything, you are fine, I'm fine. Mm. You are this and that. You dress well, I dress well. Your car is this. If I can speak in public and you cannot speak in public, I have won the battle. Whether for a company or for as a brand. You must learn how to speak in public. Okay. You must. Even if you are an introvert, you must train yourself. Go and read Susan Cain's book. Susan Cain. Um, what's quiet? Go and read quiet. If, even if you are an introvert. And everybody has a form of introversion in them. Okay. You must know when to let yourself go. Do the speaking. Then when you can go home and recharge. There are times that I want to be alone. But I go out, I talk, and then I go back out. I go back home and recharge. You must do that. You must constantly ask, why? Why? Like, why am I, why am I doing this? Why am I tweeting? Why, why am I on Instagram? Why am I coming for this seminar? When I was, when I was growing up, in my early 20s, I used to hear people say, ah, this is my fifth. I don't want to name the seminar. This is, this is the fifth time in a row that I'm coming for this seminar. This is the seventh time in a row I'm coming for this conference. And I'm like, in my head, I'm like, what's wrong with these people? You're coming seventh year in a row, but you're still looking like the same thing. So what's the point? You must act on the things you learn. It's not enough to read books. It's not enough to, to travel. It's not enough to meet new people. You must take action. I think one of the things that people don't... Yeah, join Toastmasters to improve your speaking. One of the things that people don't do is actually take action. You see people are reading and reading. Some people actually do the reading. They do the exploring. <laughs> but they're not taking action. <laughs> when, when I watch... Some of my so I, 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 was, I was watching Game of Thrones in 2012. And, you know, episode one, episode two, episode three, they were just having sex like savages. I was like, this thing is not interesting. So I stopped watching it. I stopped watching it. And then around 2000 and 2017, 18, I'll just wake up. Jon Snow is trending. Who is this Jon Snow? What are they? What's going on? Basically, I just realized that everybody was watching this thing. So I went to watch that thing that I abandoned. So it was the beginning of last year, January. I spent 17 hours of my life binging on Game of Thrones. Why did I watch Game of Thrones? I watched it because I address audiences around the world. I make, I give examples. I use pop culture. I use movies. I use things that the average person can relate to. And I realized that Game of Thrones having become such a cultural phenomenon, mm -hmm. I had to know what happened in there. Because I needed to be able to use it. That was why I watched Game of Thrones. I am not going to waste my life. In fact, I never watch any series without knowing that it has made a cultural impact. I won't be the, so one thing I will not be the first person to do. I will not be the first person to discover a series. It's not me, God forbid. Oh my god. Other people will go and find out. They will find it worthy. <laughs> and I use my Twitter followers to do this for me a lot. Then I will now watch. I cannot <laughs> stand and because also because I watch things differently. If I'm watching a documentary, <laughs> I pause it, I go on Google to check, I go and quickly order a book because I watch the documentary. 
it's fully engaging. So I cannot even afford to just watch everything. Because everything I watch is fully and I'm fully engaged to the personalities, to the stories, to the nuances. So I'm so I have to be intentional about everything. And I'm one of, if, if I'm very intentional, I'm very strategic about what I do. Completely. I have times that I relax. Ah, because I was going to ask you that what do you now do for fun? Exactly. Fun? I needed to say that. <laughs> because before they start thinking I'm some robots, right? I have, I have times that I relax. Like this December, I let go completely. I was I was doing roller coasters. Is it roller coasters they call it? Is it roller coasters they call it? Yes, all those rides, Abby. The rides. Yeah, yeah. Yes, I was yes. doing crazy rides. I was being slammed from. Are you, are you sure you were not doing? Are you sure you were not doing those rides to learn how to do roller coaster in the equilibrium? I was. I wanted to do. I wanted to do something because because really some of those kids I was actually very afraid of them because I I, I would see I'm like I'm not gonna do this. Just slam me like that. But I wanted to put myself in a position where I had to be afraid. I, I had to. They said do, do it afraid, that? but do you see? Do you see that it was not for fun? There was a something. Yeah, but boy was for fun. Boy was for fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was for fun. It was so fun. <laughs> yeah, but but the, but one has to learn something, right? But really, yeah. it was for fun. I, I let go. I I played. I and I have fun with children a lot, by the way. I I have come. I have my best conversations with children. I try to understand them, their psychology, yeah. why they listen to me and they not listen to their parents. I try to get, I try to get why and and tell the parents the reason why this this girl is not answering is because you don't do this. You don't watch this particular movie with them. You're just talking about your politics. They want you to watch this thing with them yes. and then give them this thing and talk to them yes. about PJ Masks. Uh, yes. And all so of this thing. And that's how you also influence adults, by the way. Yes. Hey, I do okay. things for fun, though, really. I need to say, I do things for fun. Don't even get it. I mean, I watch football for fun. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, if you say so. <laughs> you say so. <laughs> if you say so. So, basically, I think that, you know, you said some of the things that are fundamental for brands. And I think that even, I mean, with everything you've said today, there's so much to take away. There's so much. And, you know, I think that even for me and some of my, my colleagues are here, my friends, you know, that place where you said people will be reading and reading that, you know, take action. You know, when you said take action, it's something that is so critical that we all hear, you know, some of my friends are here and they're like, you know what, enough reading, take action. Do you understand? You know, um, honestly, JJ, I am so, let me tell you something. I know that, you know, sometimes I use, like as if it's a cliche, but I just want to say that You've said the reason why you said yes, right? And and I'm happy that you found me worthy of More your than time. Worthy. I honestly, I, I, I don't want, I've been mean, lately, every time I've been doing my lives, I've almost been crying. But I, 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 that you found that everybody that came on this platform found the Zafaya brand, found me worthy to be able to engage on this platform and be able to impact and teach and share and just you know i from osai to performance to you i don't take it for granted i know you guys are so busy you this is what you do you know you charge for this you charge to speak i am grateful and i don't know i've, I've become so emotional i don't know what's wrong with me maybe maybe just lately i think uh, i think i think you don't maybe you don't um and it's a good thing but the truth of the matter is okay you're an icon you it, when when you when you conquer an industry, and that industry now becomes something that people aspire to, that a generation before they didn't even think existed. So you're not just a business person. You're not just you're not just an entrepreneur. You are an icon. If you were a musician, you'd be Jay Z. You'd be Beyonce. You'd be Rihanna. Because your perception is beyond. The industry is beyond the fire. It's, 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 you're an icon. Like I don't know how to define it. Like you, you are an inspiration to an entire generation. I'm not just people that are into events because you did something that others used to do, maybe, and then you made it look like it had never been done before. And then people started to want to do it like you. 
And then because of you and people like you, we genuinely have an industry that wasn't started by government. It was started by people like you. And if Nigeria were a country where we invested in writing books and people were buying books, there would be books dedicated to what you did. So I know that all these people, the Mosai, Mosai is, a, is a very cool person, very nice and kind. You feel my too, like these are very generous people, very good people. But the truth is, it's you, though. You, it's you, it's, it, it's, you end it, you more than end it. You, 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 you more than paid your dues, right? But I, I, I like the fact that you don't think like that. So it, it means that you, you're, you're still like aspiring and still dreaming. But I can tell yes. you without trying to flatter you. I never flatter because I feel like flattery is a waste of time. I know. We yeah. know you don't flatter. We know, <laughs> we know you don't flatter. It's obvious you don't flatter. <laughs> You know, you're an inspiration, I'm telling you. Well, thank you, thank you, and thank you, thank you that you've opened our minds, you've like shifted our, our brains, our minds, and we're so grateful for this. I don't take this for granted at all. I, I, I am grateful, you know, out of everybody, out of everybody that I asked to speak today. I had relationships with them. These are all my sisters. But I've, I don't, I know you, but I've not had a relationship. And today, I believe that the relationship has started. Don't worry, I'm not going to be disturbing you. <laughs> <laughs> I just believe the relationship has started. You can disturb me, it's fine. You, you can disturb me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so thank you. Thank you so much. We're so grateful. This, this, two, this few hours have not been wasted, honestly. I am in awe. I'm in awe. And I think that one of the things I want to say, and I just want to dedicate this, I know that this few days I've been a bit emotional, and I think it's because I've just been missing my sister so greatly. And I know that one of the things that Tosi said to me was, I needed to just do the things I dreamt of doing. Uh, you know, sometimes you are so timid, you don't want to do it, you're afraid. And you've given me just more words and more assurance of things that I need to do. And I'm so grateful that... I know my why. I know my why. And I will stop, honestly. Thank you for this. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And everybody, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Thank you so thank much. You. <laughs> thank you. Okay, so, gosh, what's wrong with me? I'm not going to be emotional next week. I'm going to be very cool. I'm going to come dancing next week. I need to dance. I think I'm not re dancing enough. Maybe that's what's happening to me. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm going to come dancing for the next edition. So, thank you. Thank you, JJ. My thank pleasure. You, thank thank you. you. I had, I had a little fun. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, 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 honestly, and I want to say I love. I've told everyone I love you. I also love you. I love you. I, I love, love you. you. I love you. <laughs> You're amazing. You're God extraordinary. You. Yeah. Thank you so much. I thank you. So thank you. So let's not keep you. I know you have a lot to do. That you came out and did this for us. We're grateful. So thank you. Thank you. Have a fantastic evening. Rest of the thank evening. Thank you to thank all you. my friends that joined. Tapemo, Dolly Shang. <laughs> <laughs> Abe, everyone, yes, I, I, I don't want to waste Kunke's time. Thank you so much, everyone that joined. I don't take it for granted. God bless you guys. Bye. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>